you were talking about uh, uh, psychological recovery in, in particular. Uh, I love that, uh, that topic because <clears throat> I see a lot of people who, who really uh, are going to exercise again as a, in, as a chore. They approach their exercise as like, oh my God, I absolutely need to do something or I need to follow that program. I was given this program and it's the best program, it's cutting edge science program, so I have to follow this. Uh, most generally, what I observe in the fitness industry, the way things are approached is that um, the type of drills, the type of movements that are being used for conditioning, for general physical preparedness, are mechanistic, are reductionist, are non-adaptive. By non-adaptive, I mean that you're not free to move the way you want or the way your environment dictates. And therefore, it just reinforces the notion that exercising is a chore, is like additional work that you have to add to your life and not as something that empowers and liberates you. So in those conditions, it's hard to uh, talk about psychological uh, recovery also because um, even if you enjoy training, um, in most cases it's going to be highly specialized, it's going to be specialized in some ways and at some point like, okay, that's enough, I need a break. Um, usually people use conditioning in various ways, for instance, to the lifter running is conditioning, is cardio conditioning. So you, you're not going to run because of, of the ability to run or the pleasure to run, but I, a supplemental training you need in order to be a healthier lifter, for instance. Mm -hmm. Now, to the runner, uh, lifting weight is going to be the supplemental training they need for conditioning, not because they're interested in the ability to lift and carry heavy things, but because they want more strength. And that's because of the exercising approach to exercising. Yeah. Now, if you exercise based on an activity and you, and you exercise that activity, um, uh, you mean you, you base your activity based on who you are as, as, as a living being, and then you start moving naturally, then nothing is supplemental. You do need to walk, you need to stand, you need to uh, uh, kneel, and you need to crawl, and you need to balance and jump and climb. You need to do all the things the human animal does. And then it's never boring. And there's also one reason why it can never be boring, because it's endless in variety. In variety to adaptation, adaptation to variety of environment. You're not going to just do pull-ups as an upper body strength conditioning drills. A pull-up is going to be a climbing movement. Is it the same? Not at all, because if a pull-up is a climbing movement, then you start thinking of how can I climb differently and what else could I climb? Not just a, 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 a horizontal bar, but maybe a vertical pole, maybe a tree, maybe a rope, maybe a, a cliff. And then the, the, the activity, you exercise through the activity of moving naturally. And personally, I can never be bored. And I never see really people getting bored because it's endless. Look at kids, that's what they do. Have you ever seen a, a kid telling you, hey, you know what, today I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> today I don't want to move. You know? These uh, days, when yes. they're young, yeah. Today they, they learn to, to, to kill people on, on, the, on the PlayStation before they used to, they learn to move their butt on the playground. Uh, but that's the idea. Yeah. You, know, so you just said something that I find really interesting, and I think we've kind of glossed over this, and that is 